Uh, next up, we have Connor McCandless. And Connor, I'm really fascinated to hear what you've got to talk about because he's the Group Sales and Innovation Director at Energy Store. And his presentation is called New Solutions to Really Old Problems. I've been in this game for, well, I told the minister, 12 years. We're still dealing with the same issues that we had when I started. Different, but the same. Let's see what you've got as answers. Connor, all yours. Well, there's certainly no pressure after that introduction. Um, yeah, it's nice to be here. Uh, I think probably half of you have already heard of what I'm going to say in the next 10 minutes on the stand. So for the half of you that haven't heard it, hopefully you find something interesting. Uh, as, as mentioned, you know, this is a, some solutions to, to really old problems and under the theme of, of innovation. Um, what we're going to talk through in, is you know, who Energy Store is very, very briefly, a beautiful old problem uh, that's unique to Scotland, how we went about finding a solution to that problem, and then you know, what the response has been to the, the people in the buildings we've helped or the local authorities that, that we've helped. Um, so first of all, uh, who Energy Store are, uh, we manufacture products, uh, primarily insulation products that we use in walls, floors, or roof insulation. Um, you can see from the not to scale map that we, we have manufacturing in six facilities throughout the UK and Ireland. Um, and there are two there that are also have a, a green color tint rather than our, our orange branding. And, and that's because those two sites um, are using 100% green energy. Um, so everything that we manufacture for use in Scotland is made in Clydebank um, using green energy. Um, our products historically have really been focused uh, in the cavity wall sector, where about 50% of all homes that get domestic cavity wall retrofit throughout the UK and Ireland are using our products. Um, we only sell those products to approved installers, so they go through a training program where we teach them how to use our machinery, teach them how to use our products. They can only source the machinery from us, they can only source the product from us, and that really helps us to make sure that the, the quality and supply chain is there. And then I think you know this is a net zero conference, and one of the things that we've done in the last year is we've set ourselves um, a mission that we call the emissionless mission, and that is that we intend to be at net zero by 2028. And that's you know if you look at some of our peers that are manufacturers in the insulation sector, they're talking 2040s or 2050. Um, we believe we can get there in the next five years. We've already made two of our plants green. Um, we're actually going to remove two of our manufacturing facilities entirely because the infrastructure at those sites just isn't there to support a net zero transition. Um, but you're clearly, like, net zero is a big part of what we do and it's, it's something we're passionate about. Um, but to be more specific to the, the problem and, and the beautiful problem that, that we've encountered in, in Scotland, so probably maybe up to half of this room live in tenement properties, uh, one in four homes in Scotland, um, and even higher percentages in Glasgow and Edinburgh, where probably a lot of you came from today, are tenement properties. Uh, any of you that have lived in those properties, I lived in one at university, uh, they're certainly cold and drafty, and uh, you have to wear a lot of jumpers during the winter, um, but they're you know, unique heritage properties that are really difficult to deal with as well. And, you know, if any of you have worked on projects because of that listed building status, external wall insulation is just completely out of the question. Um, internal wall insulation, you know, you're, you're risking damaging beautiful internal features, uh, making the home smaller to live in. And, um, you know, that's just something that if you have a solution that, that helps you to avoid that, then before we started this research project, we thought if we can find that solution, you know, people might be interested. And so what we did to try and find that solution, first of all, um, we wanted to, first of all, we discovered that when you look at the construction of those tenement properties or those kind of pre-19 properties, uh, you have kind of a historic solid wall, probably 300 mil uh, thick, maybe thicker. You then have a gap between that external structural wall and your internal linings, your plasterboard. So there's actually a gap in there. Um, and what we realized was that one of the product ranges that we make is an injected product where we 
essentially make small holes in a wall and inject beads into the wall. Um, we felt that we could work out a way to tailor an application method of that product for use in these types of properties. Um, and if we were to do that, then we would really deal with some of those problems that are unique to a, a tenement style property. Um, but we also recognize that these buildings are really old and, and are precious and we didn't want to do any damage to them. So what we wanted to do before we got too carried away with a, a successful way to install them was to, to measure the impact that our products made in, in, those, in those properties. And then ultimately we knew that if we could prove that we could fill the gaps, if we proved that it worked in real life, uh, we would still need to go through necessary accreditation processes before anybody would be comfortable using it, uh, particularly in local authority homes. So we worked on a research project with Construction Scotland Innovation Centre that's now been renamed um, as I think BEST, Edinburgh Napier University and our accreditation body Kiwa. And what we then wanted to do was uh, we found 10 trial properties in, in three local authority areas in Scotland and we uh, installed the products into those properties and monitored it and measured its in-life performance for a full six months through the winter months to see what changes would happen in those properties. Um, and thankfully, um, when we looked at the impact, um, it was, it was, it was some, some great results. Uh, we looked at the thermal performance, so we measured the U-value in the actual walls where we installed the product for the six months. We measured the air tightness of the properties before and after, and we continue to monitor the moisture content within the properties. So really, we, those are the three critical factors we felt that the products would contribute to in, in the property. And the results that we had, firstly, from a thermal performance perspective, the average imp improvement in those properties is a 63% improvement, with some as high as into the 80s. Um, from an air tightness perspective, the average improvement was two cubic meters. Um, most properties, you know, that are tenements, if you live in them, they're drafty, they're, they're, you can hear the wind rattling through them. So they're typically into the low teens in terms of their air tightness. So, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, a modern home um, doesn't, doesn't comply unless it's below five. Um, some of the, the exhibitors here today that are passive focused, you know, they're less than one. So. To bring it down from 12, 13, 14 by a couple of cubic meters, it's improving the air tightness, which improves the energy efficiency, but still is allowing the property to breathe. And the final one was to look at the condensation impact. And actually, when we did the monitoring, the injecting the, the bead into the property didn't change the, the moisture and the condensation within that property. So we were able to improve the. <clears throat> We were able to improve the thermal performance. We were able to do that without compromising on the, the, the size of the house, the home, without compromising on the original features of the properties. And crucially, we didn't change the breathability and the moisture control within the property. Um, in terms of the response to that then, um, you know, we had some really nice things to hear from people actually living in the homes about having to turn down their heating and you know, what a difference it made to their lives, which ultimately, you know, it, it brings us you know, a sense of joy and pride that we're able to, to help those people. Um, we also received off-gem innovation status. So for those of you that are working in local authorities, by the product receiving that badge, if you like, um, they are funding, they're pro providing more funding to homes treated with this measure than other IWI measures. And it also means that when you have um, EPC rated D social housing, you can use this measure within those properties, but you wouldn't be able to with measures that did not have innovation. So widens the pool of properties you can treat and gives you more money to treat them. Um, we've installed over 800 properties now since we initially completed the research in 2019. Um, obviously 2019 is a great time to do an R&D project because you launched them in 2020 and everyone uh, stops doing work in, in homes but you know we've we started it and, and we've seen that momentum and we'll by the end of this year we'll probably done about 5,000 uh, and then the average improvement we're seeing on SAP is about seven points and 
just lastly, I think the, you see the Union Technical uh, logo there. Uh, they're one of our approved installers. They probably have done two thirds of the properties that we've worked in, um, and you know they offer great access to those funding routes to help you maximise the funding available to those projects. Um, lastly, um, you know if you want to find out any more and you haven't talked to us on the stand, we'll be around upstairs, or you're very welcome to to reach out to us by email and, and follow us on, on LinkedIn and all those other socials. Uh, thank you. Thanks,